and welcome to episode 125 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 23rd of July. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making since the last podcast. I do apologise for not having a podcast up last week, I was just absolutely shattered and I couldn't face talking to the camera so I thought I'll just save up all the craftiness for this week. So hopefully there's lots of crafty goodness to share with you today um so i have some knitting some crochet some sewing quite a few confessions oh dear <laughs> i have a couple of questions from the ask me anything thread and also i have some information on my shop update at the very end of the podcast so you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft House Magic and I also have my own website crafthousemagic.co.uk where you can find lots of information about the podcast but also my online shop where I sell my hand dyed yarn, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles, fabrics, wadding and other bag making things um, and also patterns as well. So we have the summer sock along going on in the Ravelry group at the moment. They can be shorty socks they can be knee-high socks if you like any sort of adult socks please come and join in the discussion thread and also make sure you include your finished objects in there as well the more posts you put the more likely you are to win prizes so we've already got a couple of sock patterns in there that have been donated by the lovely Helen who's Helen Kurtz on Ravelry um, and she's already donated the a copy of the reverse striations pattern but now she's given us another sock pattern which is the give and take socks which I think is rather lovely I'll show you a picture up here and there's sort of two versions which is really nice to be able to pick as well in one pattern and with every purchase that you make of the pattern a pound goes to the Maya Sotis UK charity so it is well worth um, supporting Helen over on Ravelry anyway I will put links to the patterns that I've mentioned of hers um, in the down bar as well and also it'll be on my website on the blog and show notes tab on the left hand side. I have finally drawn for the Spring Shawl Along prizes. There are three prizes that I've drawn for and I'm going to call the names out and I'm not going to show you exactly what you've, you've won but you'll have won at least a couple of skeins of yarn or a bag and a skein of yarn. I haven't worked out what exactly I'm going to send you yet but I thought it'd be lovely to have a surprise. So we have Nikki U33 we have Fizzy Knits and we have Knit Spin Mom 1025 so congratulations you guys. I will be sending some Ravelry messages out if I don't receive an email from you guys with your contact details so that I can send those prizes out to a physical address. So thank you so much for joining in with the Spring Shawl Along and please do come and join the Summer Sock Along as well. It's lovely to see what everyone's making and there will be lots of other make alongs coming soon so watch out for those so let's get into the good stuff shall we first of all we've got some knitting so this is the transportation scarf um by tanis gray and it's out of the lovely knitting magic book um harry potter knitting magic book that I, and i've been working on this absolutely ages <laughs> I'm not quite sure how well you'll be able to see this and it's absolutely massively hot but I've added some lovely big tassels Woo! <laughs> so this is knitted with Aran weight yarn so it's extra extra thick so it's out of this book Harry Potter Knitting Magic and I was knitting uh, a pattern from this book as part of a knit along that I was doing with the lovely Becky from the Back to Blighty podcast and I've only now just finished <laughs> knitting this so it started on this block the night bus block and then you have the brooms Nimbus 2000 I reckon <laughs> and then a platform nine and three quarters section so those three are the blocks and they're just repeated all the way through so there's one two three four repeats of the pattern and actually just at the end here is just the start of the the bus block just here this little um sort of checkerboard section just to finish it off at the end and then I've added the tassels 
which I absolutely love. So in the pattern book, you actually weren't supposed to include grey in there, but I've included it in the end anyway. Um, what I did as well is that it didn't tell you to sew up the end of the tube because it's knitted in a massive tube. I did actually hand sew the end um, shut before I then added the tassels just because I was being a bit over cautious really and making sure that it closed but I'm sure it would have probably closed fine with the addition of these tassels. So these tassels were basically 12 inch strands of yarn and a group of 10 for each of the tassels and you took the centre of these strips and used a crochet hook to pull that loop in and then um, put the ends through that loop to secure it so um, you could actually sort of undo that relatively easy if you wanted to take them off for any reason but there we go. I It is actually a very very cozy scarf and Adam is so ridiculously pleased with it <laughs> he's very excited to go and visit the Harry Potter Warner Brothers studios and wear his massive scarf um, to be honest though I think it's rather heavy to be carrying around <laughs> but I'm sure he'll wear it because he always gets really cold I think he'll probably have it so that it winds around his neck like that to show the tassels. What I'll do is I'll get Adam to do some twirls in the garden with his new scarf on once the podcast's um, been recorded. Um, and I'll pop that here so that you can see um, how he looks in his new scarf. I always forgot to tell you what the yarns were that I used. So I used my own hand dyed yarn in uh, Aran base that I have in my shop which is a merino nylon and it's 115 grams and you get 190 meters of that um, so and it's a lovely squishy soft base and that little bit of nylon makes it a little bit more durable so I used purple rain I used two skeins of the purple rain and that's what it said in the pattern it needed for the purple I used one skein of the blue which is because the night one skein of the sort of golden yellow which is walking on sunshine and then I used four skeins of ordinary world which is the sort of background grey and that's pretty much what the pattern said, apart from the grey and where it said it needed five skeins and I only used four. And I still had quite a bit left at the end, so I, you'd probably be alright not buying quite as much as it said in the pattern. I am a relatively tight knitter, so sometimes it's always good to have an extra skein that, if it's grey, you could probably use it for something else. But it is very thick and very squishy. Isn't that cute? Adam is so chuffed. Right, so that's my first finished object. Uh, I, in fact, that's my only finished object, but I do have a half finished object. And it's my socks. So this is knitted from a sock blank that I dyed up. And I'll show you the sock blank first. It's been screwed up a bit, so it looks a bit messy, but it's one of my sock blanks that I've got in my shop. And I thought I quite fancied knitting on a sock blank, actually. So I picked one up myself and I finished one sock. So that's what it looks like knitted up. You can see that it is a little bit wiggly because I have knitted it from a sock blank and I haven't blocked this properly yet, so it will neaten up a little bit more. But I do love these colours. There's some sort of delicate greys, like a turquoise and a corally pink. And you can see some of the background colour of the yarn in there as well, which I think is really nice. There are There's a little bit of pooling on this side, which is really weird, but I think it's quite nice. And with it being a sock blank, it doesn't sort of um, pool in spirals or anything. It's just really random. So there's a little bit of coral there, but I really like this side because it looks like a watercolour painting to me. I'm really pleased with how these are coming along. So you might notice that this has got an unusual shaped heel. Now this is called the Vanilla is the New Black sock pattern and it is by Anna Fletcher and Anna is spelt really unusually. I think it's pronounced Anna. It's A-N-N-E-H but I will leave links to the pattern in the down bar as well. So I'm really chuffed with how this has come along. I really like this heel because it gives you quite a lot of depth for a high instep without doing a heel flap and it's a bit of fun to have a, a bit of a different pattern really. If I take it off the sock blocker you might be able to see a little bit better the shape of the back of the heel. 
Oh, I thought that's really interesting. And then there's like a, a heel flap section um, on the base of the foot, which I think was, it's really interesting. Now you can see when the sock isn't on the blocker that, you, that it has got quite a generous amount of space for a high instep there which I'm really chuffed about. So one sock is finished and I have started the second sock which is in a bit of a tangled mess. <laughs> I've done just the ribbing of the next one and you can see again it's a little bit wiggly because it is knitted from a sock blank but with a bit of blocking it should get a little bit neater afterwards but I am enjoying knitting on those. That's actually going to be a, a Christmas gift so I've started early. <laughs> I can't say who they're for though yet. Also I wanted to say to you that I was looking at Anna Fletcher's other patterns and she got this really cool other sock pattern that's got cables on it which had a similar heel to this one and it was called the black cable which I thought was really gorgeous so I'll pop a picture up of that as well and I really fancy knitting a pair of those so I'll have to have a look in my stash and see what I'm going to knit them out of. I finally got out my water lily again. So the water lily is a gorgeous sort of t-shirt pattern and it's by Megan Fernandez. And I, I'm not kidding you, I cast this on in January 2018. How awful is that? <laughs> I've got in a bit of a tangle, which isn't good. I'm a very organized podcaster here, have you noticed? <laughs> So previously I'd got, this is the back section and you can see that there's some gorgeous lace. I absolutely love this lace. So that's the back section there, which is, oh, I love it. It's got a Latvian braid just at the bottom there and we're not going to talk about that too much because I don't really enjoy doing those. <laughs> not for a distance that's as wide as my body anyway. <laughs> so um, at the weekend I basically picked it up and I'd knitted on the front, I'd just literally got the needles just below where I'm supposed to do the Latvian braid and I thought I'm just going to do this Latvian braid, it's going to be easy and then I remembered why I'd put it down because I was apprehensive about doing Latvian braid I think and I'd forgotten about it so I spent possibly three hours knitting this Latvian braid <laughs> it's the, well it's not hard to actually do but because you sort of twist the yarns around each other as you're doing it, it was driving me crazy. So, <laughs> but the perseverance has produced something that's going to be nice in the end. So that's okay. And I'm past the Latvian braid. Um, basically, it gives this ridge um, at the bottom of where the lace is there. Once I've actually sort of finish the top you'll be able to see that it goes into a wiggly shape because of the way the lace is worked above it and I've actually worked one repeat of the lace since the weekend so I'm really chuffed about that and actually I really I really enjoy knitting lace I should knit lace more you just need a little bit of peace and quiet sort of when you set up though when you're starting off on a row so that you can get your head into it before you start sort of talking or watching the TV or something. But once I'm into it, I can watch the television and do it as well, especially if it's quite a simple repeat. And I think this is a relatively simple repeat. You can see what you're doing in the rows below so you can keep track of where you are. I'm starting to lose my voice already. It's dreadful, isn't it? Because I had last week off. <laughs> It's a gorgeous t-shirt pattern. I'm going to put a picture up here so you can see what it looks like. And basically, these, this top lace bit, it goes onto a sleeve as well. So that's part of the sleeve that you're knitting all at once. And then you go back and join up at the bottom of the armpit where the lace starts um, to form the sleeve. And you're, you're sewing the front and the back together at the top of the shoulder, I think. I haven't read that far ahead because I'm never that organised. I get too excited and just think, yep, get on with it. <laughs> I shall let you know how I get on. So previously when I was knitting this I actually did some short rows for the bust shaping. See if I can show you a bit better. 
you might be able to see here there's a ridge where I've been doing some short rows to make the front a bit longer to account for my bust area so this should be this should come to sort of like here I'm shortly going to be splitting for the v-neck at the front here which is going to be quite fun and I don't, do you know I'm not far off finishing it so the lovely yarn that I used for this is from Ginger Twist Studios and it's called the Yakety Yak I think Yakety Yak 4 ply base and it's got 20% yak, 20% silk and 60% merino so it's a beautiful sort of glossy drapey fabric that's produced. It is, might as well be spring it was called but I did obviously purchase it before January 2018 so it is probably an old colourway and I don't know whether they do it anymore. I remember going to Ginger Twist Studios in Edinburgh um, when we went away to visit some friends and I purchased it to make this top in particular and I just haven't carried on with it. How dreadful is that? What I did also as well I noticed which I'd completely forgotten about I did the sort of hip shaping this is upside down so it goes wider where the hips are at the back because I just thought I'm gonna be different <laughs> and make it look a bit different so there we are I'm gonna I'm hoping it's gonna look okay in the end I've never done that before I just thought well I'll try it out if it if it goes if it looks really awful I can just undo the bottom and knit that bit again I'm sure it'll be fine we'll see anyway so I can't believe I left this project unknitted for so long when it was so close to be finished I think part of the reason was the Latvian braid but also actually I'd heard some people saying that at the top here they found that it was too wide when they'd come to the top rows and I was a bit I'm concerned about knowing where to sort of do some decreases but I think actually I'd seen a couple of posts that said just to do lots of knit twos together at the top there just to draw it in a little bit so it didn't sag over the shoulders too much and make the neckline too wide. I'm just going to play it by ear as I go along really. So that's the last of my knitting projects but I do have some crochet to show you and this probably doesn't look a lot different from last week um, although I have turned a corner so I thought I'd show you my corner <laughs> let's see if I can find it in amongst this big mass of blanket so this is the corner to corner crochet blanket and it's a tutorial by Bella Coco that I followed and I'll leave a link to the tutorial in the top of the screen here and also in the description bar in the show notes and you can see that I've just started to turn the corner <laughs> so this Oh goodness me it's going to be difficult to hold this up so it's worked from this corner diagonally so I have a massive triangle here Ugh. if you can see so I decided that this was wide enough down this side that I was going to start decreasing down this side but carry on carry on crocheting so that I have like a rectangle shape so I haven't turned the corner on this side so that at least the rows aren't getting any bigger <laughs> And you can see what the corner looks like there so it is relatively square I'm quite pleased with it so far I think some people say that sometimes when they've turned the corner it hasn't come out very square but uh, it looks okay at the moment so we'll just have to see um, once I've done quite a few more rows but I've probably done since about there since the last podcast which doesn't seem a lot but if you think that the edge the actual rows are that and that again oh, I'm getting tangled it's quite a lot of, <laughs> of crochet to do one row but I just thought I'd show you just because I turned a corner I'll probably not show you every week now because it's going to be a bit boring just showing you oh I've done like three rows <laughs> but hopefully at some point you'll be able to see some considerable difference there if I plod on with it using up all my scraps so I'm using the uh, undyed merino yarn held double with a just bits of scraps really and I've tied them together using a magic knot technique and I have a tutorial for the magic knot if you're interested pop a link up there and also in the description box I basically magic knot all the 
bits of scraps together anything that's sort of this big or bigger and then I use use them up basically I don't like wasting anything so it's really nice to use something up magic knot is really quite a strong way of joining the yarn but I like the idea of the undyed yarn being together with it so that one if I join one yarn you still have this the stability of the other yarn there to keep it strong and also that plain yarn sort of blends the colours together a bit nicer so this sort of purple here for instance was a little bit darker than the other colours so you can see how the lighter strand tones that down a little bit. I'll give you a bit more of a texture shot there. It is a very pleasurable texture to knit to be honest. And I think when I finished it, I might do some edging crochet around it as well, just to finish it off. But there we go. That's my crochet for this week. Oh, it's time for sewing. So I have a fancy dress to show you. <laughs> so Barbara, would you like to come over and show everybody? Thank you very much, Barbara. Now, this is going to be a bit difficult to show you because it is black satin. And also... Barbara's not quite as well endowed as me, so it's it's not sitting very well on her bust. <laughs> I will show you some twirls in the garden of what I look like with it on, so you can see it, what the fit is a little bit better in the full length. So this is the Upton dress by Cashmere and I'll pop a picture up here so you can see what the pattern looks like. But I also have purchased the sleeve expansion pack, which has three options for sleeve. This is the little cap sleeve option, but there are a sort of um, a fluttery sleeve and one with a tie on it, I think, as another option that you can choose but I thought a little cap sleeve would be relatively flattering just for a little black dress really well it's rather a large black dress let's face it <laughs> oh dear so I've used quite a thick black satin to make this up because I thought it's quite nice to have something in my wardrobe where if I'm invited to a Christmas party if we're allowed to go out to parties at some point in the rest of this year I've got a dress to wear because I've never got anything to wear when I've got somewhere to go not that I ever have anywhere to go to be honest but <laughs> So basically it's got a bodice which has several darts in it. I've got a bust dart up the side and one at the front here as well. So I modified the pattern so that I dropped the bust dart so that the, the dart actually points to my bust apex where it should be. And then I found that actually, because the bust dart came right out to here when I sewed it first, and then it was also almost touching this dart coming up here. So I ended up shortening it a little bit and it does make the shape a little bit more pointy. So I basically look as if I'm dressed up as Madonna, like at the 80s. <laughs> But I don't mind the shape. Once I've got it on, once my boobs have filled it, it looks quite a nice shape. I don't mind it at all. On the back panel, there are a couple of darts as well. There's some darts on the top of the shoulders as well as right up the back here. And there's a concealed zip that goes right down the back panel. There's some waist panels all the way around the bodice and obviously it's split by the zip. And the skirt is split into four pieces at the back and three pieces at the front which you can't see very well so there's a panel right at the front and one either side there and there's obviously one panel either side the zip and then a panel either side of that for the back of the back panel and then the the little cap sleeves they came as a sort of separate document that I printed out so I had the pattern pieces printed by net printer for the main part of the pattern but because the sleeve expansion pack was basically just two A4 sheets that you could stick together I just stuck those together printed them at home and then I modified the pattern so like I said I dropped the bust dart an inch I also did a a big bum adjustment <laughs> just on the panels at the back here because I find that I think it's the length from my waist to the bottom of the skirt always is shorter at the back so I just added an inch there over the bum so with the Upton dress there's two options you can have a v-neck or a round neck I just really like the shape of the v so I chose that basically the skirt isn't lined but the bodice is so I'll show you the inside of Barbara's dress Barbara you'll have to run off and hide so you don't expose yourself to everybody <laughs> so I've just 
put it inside out so you can see. So the bodice section is lined with some viscose acetate that I'd purchased from Minerva Crafts and that's a that's meant to be a liner material so it is very nice and thin and slippery and I hand sewed that to the inside of the zip and round the bottom of the bodice section and that goes round the bodice section. It doesn't cover the sleeve panels because I thought it might add a little bit too much extra bulk but it goes all the way round the back there but I didn't line the skirt because I thought it's quite a thick material anyway and I could choose to wear a separate petticoat underneath if I wanted to so with the skirt panels I've just overlocked you can't really see it very well because it's black but I've just overlocked the material and just opened the seam and I've just stitched the lining over the top so that you can see it's all open this fabric was a pain to press so you can see even now even though I've pressed and pressed and pressed that it's popping up again so it's a bit of a nightmare this fabric to work with and I was trying to actually sew it without a tailor's ham which I have in my confessions now so I can show you later but trying to sew this dress because it's quite a fitted dress without a tailor's ham to press it out all the seams nicely was a bit of a pain especially because this fabric it doesn't press very well the lining fabric was brilliant but the black satin was a bit of a nightmare to press one issue that I have with this dress is that so this is some black satin bias binding I used um, to sew the hem down and I've hand sewn that so you can't see it on the outside but I find that because it's made of a different material because it's it's basically like a polyester satin that's quite sort of it's not as fluid as the main body it may it makes the the hem of the skirt stick out more but also go into some sort of points you'll see when you um see the actual picture of me that stood in the garden so i might unpick the hem and just actually overlock it and and hand sew just the overlocked seam down rather than having the bias binding even though I thought it'd look neater what I should have done really is that I did my bias binding like I always do um when I do sort of round sleeves and things just because it isn't doesn't make such a wide bit to sew down is that I pressed the bias binding just in half and then sewed the quarter of an inch down the raw edges and then folded that in to make a smaller edge there but I think actually that's made it bulkier and make the bottom of the skirt stick out more so what I should have done is left the bias binding folded as, as it how it came and had a wider bit of bias tape on the inside of the skirt so it was sort of be sticking out but not sort of jutting out as much as it is but you'll see how it hangs when I'm stood in the garden doing twirls embarrassing myself <laughs> But that's the thing that I wanted to moan about really but the rest of it's pretty good I did find because this is quite a thick satin material with the lining as well that the size that I normally choose was a little bit on the snug side around the boobs although I think that the effect <laughs> of the pointy boob Madonna style probably looks better with it being slightly tighter so hopefully it doesn't look too awful I haven't tried it on again since I finished making it so hopefully I still like it but I definitely like the pattern and I'd definitely make another one of these. I love the fact that it's got these massive pockets. So if I turn it the right side again, you can't hardly see the pockets because of the sort of thickness of the material. It sort of stands away from my hips and just makes them sort of like fantastically invisible. Love those. Uh, again, you'll be able to see that better when I'm sort of wearing it in the garden. It's no good me wearing it in here because I can't get far enough away from the camera. So the black satin I actually purchased from Fabricland quite a long time ago so I don't know if they'll have the same material again but I didn't buy a very expensive satin because I wanted to sort of try out the pattern first see what it was like but that was my first sewing project but I do have a second one to show you so Barbara would you like to come through and show me what you've got on 
Thank you very much, Barbara. So Barbara is wearing my penny dress hack. So the penny dress is a shirt dress with a half circle skirt bottom and it's a pattern by Sew Over It. I wanted to check the fit of the shirt section of the dress before I made a full version with my fancy fabric because I was a bit concerned about this area here being a bit too baggy and therefore making my boobs look bigger which I don't I don't want that effect really and plus the fabric I want to make a full penny dress out of was quite expensive and absolutely gorgeous so I didn't want to ruin it so I thought I'll make the shirt version first and I saw on the Sew Over It website that they've got like a, a hack page which showed you what they'd done to the pattern to get these ties at the front so in basic terms you took the shirt panels, added five centimetres to the front and the back panels. So with the addition of that five centimetres length in the body, you then added 25 centimetres length in the centre front for these tie bits. And then you did a curved line to the outside to make them so that you could tie them together nicely. Like so. The instructions on the website are really easy to follow so I'll leave a link for those in the description bar as well for you guys and I just so that I can see whether it was fit and also it's quite a cute little top so this fabric I actually made a sew over it Eve dress in that I showed a couple of episodes back and I had just enough left out of the scraps to make it this sort of test shirt version of this so I've tried it on and I'm actually I quite like that it's relatively high it's sort of on my high waist so I'd have to wear some high-waisted trousers and I did think that it might be nice to make a long black dress, holly oak dress, which is the strappy one, to go underneath. And then if there's any skin that sort of shows under here, the, dre the dress is underneath so there's no risk of exposure. <laughs> but I do like the shape of it and everything. It's just that I need to make sure that I've got trousers that are pretty high up so that I don't show any tummy because I just, I don't want to expose anybody to that. <laughs> I think actually if I made it again I'd like to make a longer version as well that goes sort of into my low waist so perhaps another five centimeters long so that I would be really comfortable with that tie being quite low down so that there's no riding up I like things to be relatively long anyway but I thought I'd try it as they said first and this is a very wearable thing so I'm quite pleased with how it came out anyway I just like to make a longer one as well I am really chuffed about how there's some panels just on the top of the shoulders and some gathers just here and it's a really clever way of having extra fabric so that your boobs can fit into the shirt rather than being really big from right up here it's the gathers sort of slim it down and with this being a rayon fabric it drapes nicely as well so I'll show you the back there it's a sort of right to the waistline there so you definitely need something like high-waisted trousers or a dress underneath so it covers any skin well if you don't mind showing skin that's fine but I just I wouldn't feel comfortable with having sort of trousers that just go to my waist if that makes sense the sleeves are sort of grown on from the rest of the body so you don't have to put any sleeves in there what I thought was a little bit strange is that the pattern pieces are actually, this is just a straight line and you snip in to fold in the sleeve hem and then sew the, the side seam and there's a risk of it sort of becoming a bit unraveled here, the fabric, only a tiny bit, but I ended up doing a zigzag top stitch over the top just to make sure that it, it didn't fray or anything, so that's what I've done there. It's got a nice narrow button placket. Barbara has got a really thick neck when I've got her extended out to my full width. So it doesn't really give you a good idea of what this sort of collar looks like at the back. Um, I'll do some twirls in the garden so you'll be able to see it on me a little bit better. But um, I really like this sort of simple collar. There's no collar stand and it's quite an easy collar to make if you haven't made a collar before. And I think actually I'd make a few of these. I think they'd go nice with a pair of jeans if I did make the longer version as well. So it might be something that becomes a bit like my Frankie Top obsession where I've got like 10. <laughs> I think I've got a few more than 10 as well. Oh dear. And I can't remember if I've said or not. So this fabric was from Fabricland that I bought 
a couple of weeks ago for the Eve dress and I did actually look back when I was showing it on the podcast when I was writing the show notes that they didn't have any left of it the last time I looked but you can get the odd sort of bargain from there and I think with rayon you can sort of go for a slightly cheaper rayon without it being sort of really bad quality and this was five pounds a meter so I think that's really good value I'd got four meters I think and I got an eve dress and my penny shirt out of it as well so I'm really pleased about that so there you go do your last twirl Barbara <laughs> I'll get her to sort of take it off and I can show you the insides of it so this is the insides of the shirt you can see that there's a facing on the inside of the back there and actually it got you to top stitch this down which is nice and secure which is quite nice there's some facing on the inside of the button placket i stitched in the ditch on the inside of the button placket there which wasn't in the instructions just because i wanted to completely enclose the facing on the inside there so you can you can lift that edge bit there but it doesn't show you any of the seams inside it sort of enclosed them a bit better with it being stitched on the facing on the back of it that encloses all the seams there as well and you can get a little bit between the shoulder and the front there 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 is a part where it's not stitched down but i didn't want to stitch on the front or on the shoulder bit because it would sort of ruin the look of the design I'm quite pleased with how that turned out what I also did is that I drafted a facing for the inside of the ties because I didn't want to be able to see the inside of this fabric because it is quite a lot grayer it gapes a little bit when you don't tie it but you can't really tell that when you've actually tied them in front of you the facing is attached to the seam allowance here and also it's caught inside the button placket so I think that's held enough if I did it again actually I did a really small seam allowance just on the back panel and I probably do facing all the way across the back as well so that it was in sort of one section well you'd probably have to cut them separately but the whole of the bottom of the shirt could be faced as well just because it I think it was flipping up at the back although if I extended it then I wouldn't have that problem I don't think anyway I shall show you the sleeve that I was talking about earlier so the pattern says for you to sort of snip into the seam allowance and turn back the and top stitch the seam allowance for the sleeve and then just stitch down the side panel and I've just done some zigzag stitches over the top of there just to make sure that that doesn't fray or anything and it doesn't look the neatest job but I was a bit concerned about it fraying slightly that's what it looks like on the outside so there we are that's my little sort of wearable twirl for my penny shirt and next week I hope to have a whole penny dress to show you and it's out of the most gorgeous Lady McElroy cotton lawn so I can't wait to show you that and with it being lawn and a half circle skirt it's quite a sort of a, a fancy skirt I think <laughs> although being a shirt dress it's sort of like it's going out for lunch sort of attire so that'll be fun to make now I have some confessions oh dear so it's basically Davina from Little Workroom Crafts Fault that I purchased a ball winder to be honest I was looking for one for a while and I saw that Davina had got one on her podcast and I just thought how gorgeous is this I can leave this out in my craft room so that when I need to wind yarn I can just grab it and use it as in situ and it's a really big wooden cone here so that I think you probably get a couple of hundred grams on there which is really good and it's a really nice beautiful wood finish 
and a little wood handle here so I'm really pleased about that so I had to purchase one there's also a clamp to hold it onto the table but I think that's rather lovely and then also because I've gone on there I've been looking for a sheepy swift tray just so I purchased one of those as well I've been using one of the metal ones for ages and they're just not very sturdy for these bits that come out here and I wanted a nice wooden one, one because it's pretty and two because it's a little bit more sturdy as well. I do find that it sort of drags a little bit so I think I need to add just a bit more wax around where the little thing props it open when the umbrella's open. Right, let me just show you. So this pulls out and then you, tie, you tighten this up here. I'm turning it the wrong way because I'm doing it with the wrong hand. <laughs> So you tighten this up here and basically these two surfaces rub together so I need to add a little bit more wax so that this turns a bit more free. It doesn't catch that much, it's just that I think if it, if it ran slightly more free then when I'm caking the yarn up on the ball winder the ball won't be quite so tight if that makes sense. So that's my theory. I have added a little bit of wax but I haven't put too much in yet. So the Bull Winder and the Swift are both from a lovely company called Yarnworks and they leave this lovely little note with it with their sort of um, details on the back which I can show you. So they have a website and they're a UK based company and I just thought that the customer service was really good so definitely recommend those. I will leave a link to them in the description down below as well if you want to um, pop and have a look at their website. I believe that they sell yarns and things as well so it's just nice to support a sort of local business. And I've also purchased rather a lot of fabric. Well I think it's rather a lot anyway way oh dear so one of my favorite shops is fabrics galore so I was looking on there because I wanted some stretchy fabric to make the Joni dress from the Tillion Buttons stretch book and I saw this fabric and I thought oh that will be perfect because it's gorgeous isn't that gorgeous so you can see how I needed to buy it <laughs> so this is a sort of cotton and like her stretch fabric um, and I thought that would be lovely as the Joni dress because it's just nice and bright with a relatively sort of darkish background um, I thought be relatively flattering for a sort of stretchy dress I picked up two meters of this I think that the pattern said you might need about two and a quarter or two and a half but I reckon that because it's not directional fabric that I could probably get it out of two meters because I'm quite thrifty with cutting things out of smaller pieces of fabric <laughs> and then I saw this how cute it's Alice in Wonderland jersey fabric and I did think that maybe I could make another Joni dress out of this but maybe it's a little bit I don't know, charactery. <laughs> so I think this might be a pair of pajamas, but oh, I love it. Beautiful sort of um, like a corally pink with the teals and greens and blues in there. I think that that will be really nice. So I'm going to enjoy making something out of that. And I got two meters, so I should be able to get at least some pajamas out of it, or maybe I will make a journey dress. We'll see. And then I've noticed this fabric a few times. So those two are jersey fabrics. And then I saw this rayon. It's got unicorns on it. But I also think that because it has the flowers in the background, it doesn't look too in your face sort of character -y, if that makes sense. <laughs> Basically childish. <laughs> but isn't that gorgeous? I think those flowers, I just love it. So this is a rayon, so it's a very drapey fabric. And this feels a really nice rayon. It's like a chalet, I think. Really nice. So there we go. That's my fabrics galore purchases. And not so long ago, I'd bought some, well, maybe it was like last year, I'd bought some black and white fabric, which I used my, quite recently for my Hollyoak dress, which is a cashmere pattern. It's like the strappy one. So it's like a black and white spotty rayon. And I got it from Rainbow Fabrics a while ago. And I thought, actually, I think that was relatively good quality and it was really, really inexpensive. So I went back to Rainbow Fabrics and had a look. 
and actually I'd had an email that sort of reminded me of it as well and they were having a sale so it was even more money off so I had to buy some <laughs> and initially I just saw this one and I don't normally go for fabrics that are quite light on the background but isn't that just so summery and cheerful I thought I'm having to have this and it's a viscose crepe as well so it's the crepe has got sort of a bumpy texture but because it's viscose it's nice and drapey so I just had to have that and I bought four meters because it was three pounds fifty a meter how really good value is that and it actually feels nice quality as well I'm showing you the back I think actually oh dear what that, what a failure in a podcaster I am you can't quite see the how bright it was I was showing you the backside so there we go really nice sort of bright pinks yellows blues with the leaves in there as well so lovely lovely and summery I think that's that's quite a nice quality I haven't washed this yet because I always wash my fabrics before I make clothes with them but I just could not believe um, how good the value was and I love the print which is doubly good so that's that one four meters of that <laughs> because I know that the eve dress I need three and a half meters or just under and you could only buy a full meter and if it's three pound fifty you can't really go wrong can you if it's lovely stuff as well I saw this and I wouldn't necessarily have picked it for the actual pattern on it but I think the background color is absolutely gorgeous and I think from sort of when you stood away from it it reads such a gorgeous color I just couldn't resist if you look closely to it the actual flowers are like a beigey color which isn't quite as it wouldn't be something I normally go for but this background color I was just like wow I think sometimes when you're picking things for dressmaking if you actually look at things as like a, a whole piece of fabric from a bit of a distance you can sort of get a bit of a, a better idea of what it looked like on rather than just thinking oh that looks really nice from a close-up section if that makes sense uh, let's get a bit closer there so that's another viscose material and I also got that four meters and that was three pounds fifty a meter as well from rainbow fabrics and we have last but not least now I don't normally buy just cottons and this is a relatively thick cotton really but I thought that since I've just made the Upton dress that I actually something like this I could make an Upton dress with it and have it to go to a wedding nobody I know is actually getting married yet but you know <laughs> Oh dear, and I thought that would be gorgeous and I think this was £5 a metre or something like that which is very very inexpensive and I thought that I would just love to wear something like that with a with a glass of Prosecco in on the garden, yes? <laughs> oh dear, so somebody I know needs to get married now so that I can make this dress and actually wear it because I think it's probably a bit dressy just to well maybe I can hang around my own garden with a glass of Prosecco with it <laughs> oh dear so I think that's all my fabrics I've got to show you oh actually it isn't I forgot to get some more I'm just gonna go and get the fabric now <laughs> yes it's another one it's just a plain um, red crepe this one um, because I wanted to make a red Charlotte dress and I just thought this colour would be absolutely gorgeous it's reading a lot more sort of Christmassy red it's a more of a it's sort of between a burgundy let's see if I can get the camera to that's probably slightly more it's quite a dark red and this is a quite a drapey and this is actually a polyester something I don't normally buy but I thought because the Charlotte dress it's got quite gapy sleeves so I might be able to get away with the polyester it's just I was finding it difficult to find a red viscose crepe so I ended up picking up a polyester one it was like seven pounds something a meter from Minerva craft so even if I find that it's a little bit hot being a polyester crepe then at least I'll it's it's not a very expensive one to start out with the first version of a dress if that makes sense but I just wanted a red because I saw that Lisa from so over it was wearing a red one of the Charlotte dress and I just looked at it and I 
I want that exact dress. <laughs> Obviously, a little bit bigger so it fits me. So I just thought I'm going to go for it and just buy some polyester red and then see how I go. So that's all the fabric I've ordered. But I did order a ham and a sleeve. I can't remember what you call this, but this is a tailor's ham. These are the prim ones because I just I wanted to get them really quickly because I wanted to use them on my on my penny top that I made and they did come really quickly just off Amazon. I did try and get them from a smaller company but everywhere I looked was out of stock apart from Amazon so I did end up buying these from Amazon. You can actually make some of these yourself. You can put either sawdust or I think you could use yarn scraps inside as well but I just thought I do really don't want to be spending a couple of hours making something when I need to be making more dresses because I'm obviously obsessed at the moment. <laughs> But I'll leave links for the tailor's ham and I think this was like a sleeve ham or something like that. But I will leave the links to them down below anyway so you'll be able to find them. And I thought, to be honest, what I could do is cover this if I don't really like the pattern. And it, to be honest, because it's a blue one, I don't mind. It kind of goes with the craft room, so we don't mind that. And it, it, I'd actually used this to repress my Upton dress once I'd made it. And I think this would have been, it would have made it a lot easier to make that one because it was such a pain to press with it being quite bouncy fabric. So there we go. So that's all my confessions. That was a bit naughty really, wasn't it? <laughs> But I do have some questions from the Ask Me Anything thread. So first of all, Mims was asking me how I choose fabric for a dressmaking project because she's made some things lately and just not been happy with the end product. So when you're choosing a fabric to make a garment, you need to consider whether that pattern needs to have stretch. So for patterns that are written for stretch, you need to have like a jersey or a knit type of fabric so that it stretches in the opposite direction to the to the grain lines. If you've got the selvage on this edge, if you pull it this way, there is a certain amount of stretch. So this one has got some lycra in it, but sometimes you have mechanical stretch as well, which means the actual knit stitches in it that are giving that bit of stretch whereas if you've got a woven fabric it won't stretch so much so if I get <clears throat> one of these rayon fabrics if I pull that it really doesn't stretch so you must have a bit of stretch for those projects that you need some stretch with I find that purchasing jersey fabrics it's better to go for a company that I can trust does a really nice quality jersey or the manufacturer I know has got good quality jersey so I quite often have an art gallery fabric but this is an art gallery fabric um, and I know that it's going to be good quality and I know that fabrics galore also have nice quality jersey as well and there's a couple of other companies that I know all the jersey that I've got from there has been really nice quality so plush addict for instance off the top of my head I can't think of anymore but they're going for a company Company that you know sells all their um, jersey is good quality good quality fabric source I find out of all the fabrics that I buy that jersey is the most variable thing so getting a really nice quality one is really important for your end product but of course when you're making sort of a test one to see if that size fits it's best to get one that isn't quite as expensive so the other thing you need to consider is does it need to have drape at all so if you have like a cotton for instance like a quilting cotton or a fab this this fabric I bought um, for my Upton dress this hasn't got very much drape in it at all it's quite a sturdy cotton really but it's quite a structured dress so I can get away with having quite a structured fabric like this or a quilter's cotton whereas something like a cotton lawn is slightly more drapey but then something even drapier would be like the rayons where it's really sort of soft and have very smooth lines so for something like the eve dress i prefer something that's really drapey because it gives such soft and gives a lot of movement to the dress if that makes sense and the next thing that I think is important is to consider the thickness of the material because I think if you sometimes you make something in a thin fabric and it fits lovely you make it in a thicker fabric and it's actually slightly tighter because of um, allowing for that extra room for the thickness of the fabric I think those three things are really important to consider 
so I wouldn't say I was an expert on the, all the types of fabrics but I think it's just trying things out learning what shops you like to purchase from I think it's really important to look at the the pattern envelope and see what fabric requirements that they say and really try and follow that especially if you're not very experienced with choosing fabrics and I have another question from Kelly so she was asking me what to look for in an overlocker and what is an easy starter project to, to use for an overlocker now I remember when I was looking for my overlocker I wanted something that was not too expensive but was going to last me and was really sturdy I made sure that when I was looking for my overlocker that I wanted one that was relatively I wouldn't say easy to thread but easier to thread than some of them for my friend Margaret for instance she's got an overlocker where you have to take the stitch plate out to when you thread it which is an absolute nightmare so just looking at reviews on threading whether it's a reasonable one to thread because there's four threads to put through the machine it can be a little bit daunting when you first have an overlocker but you know it's not that hard if you've got the manual in front of you and you can just check all your different stages where it's got to go through it's not too bad at all and my Juki is an M I have to look at it here to see what the number is it's an M0654DE and I spent a bit of time looking up what was a good machine that wasn't too expensive but also had quite a, got a lot of good reviews of threading and things like that so I definitely recommend the one I purchased in the end I've really found it it's been working really well and I've not had too many troubles with it I think that when I've had trouble with the stitches all I've done is just cut all the threads and just re-threaded it again and it's been fine so normally it's to do with something's gone in the wrong place with the threading that's stopped the stitching working properly and there are a lot of videos out there that can help you learn how to use the overlocker to start with anyway. In terms of an easy project, you could probably just make like a cushion cover or something and overlock the edges. And to be honest, I use an overlocker in quite a lot of projects to finish those seams to just make sure that they don't, un you know, the edges of your fabric aren't going to fray and look horrible. You can even do quilting with an overlocker if you want to. But I think like cushion covers or little bags and things like that overlockers are ideal so I hope that answers your question <laughs> lastly I've just got some information on my shop update so just quickly I'm running low on my four ply merino and nylon bases so that's the 100 grams the 50 grams and the 20 gram minis I'm going to be restocking the 100 grams and the minis I think by the end of July or maybe August the 50 gram minis are out of stock until September not minis the 50 gram skeins are out of stock till September so I won't be getting those in for a while that's it for this week thank you so much for watching I'm going to try and get the tutorial that I promised last time for joining together pattern pieces for dressmaking and also the crochet reinforcement for the neckline for the cardigan that I was working on the other week for the next podcast if not next week but thank you so much for watching thank you for staying right till the end and i hope you have a lovely crafty week until next time thank you very much for watching bye